Let's unpack this further with political analyst Bongani Mashlangu joining us by Teams. Bongani, good afternoon. Thank you for your time with us here on the SABC. Um, greetings to you guys in studio and greetings to the viewers at home and thanks for the opportunity. Let's get you your thoughts. How has the governing party, perhaps since the dawn of democracy, um, the ANC lived, lived up to implemented its manifestos as we speak the two years in? Okay, um, we can even start with the last um, five years because um, basically that is the scope of which yeah. they will be engaging um, tomorrow. And then if we look at it, um, what needs to happen, and I, I think it was also partly touched on by the spokesperson, is that you have a manifesto. And then that manifesto must then inform your medium-term strategic framework, which will then inform your growth and development strategy, your strategies, and your annual performance plans. And that's um, usually in provinces or in departments, ministries. So if you look at the APPs um, of, um, uh, of provinces, departments in those provinces, national and so forth, targets have not been met. And as a consequence of targets not being met, um, you find that unemployment is still high. And now that takes me to the seven priorities or key priorities of the uh, manifesto of 2019. So maybe if we had to look at the economy, for instance, we have an economy um, of high leakages. When I talk about leakages, I'm talking about currently we are grey listed because of uh, we can't implement our financial policies. 60 something billion rand is lost to the construction mafia. 20 something billion rand is lost lost to Abu Zamazama, the gold mafia, you have your cigarette mafias, your coal mafias, um, your petrol pipeline mafias and so forth. So that is an economy that is bleeding. Those are leakages that can be used in order to advance um, a lot of things in this country. You have insignificant gross capital formation, that is investment in infrastructure, more especially in municipalities. There's hardly any infrastructure programs taking place and that service delivery being impaired. We have high unemployment and this high unemployment takes a demographic trend, uh, meaning you still have um, the black majority in this country that are struggling to enter the labor market or to be economically active, black females in particular that are still struggling. So that's what used to happen even before um, apartheid. So those things are still continuing um, in the past 30 years and they've been continuing in the last five years as well. Um, you have um, a plan that was presented to the country, economic recovery and reconstruction plan that has not been adequately implemented, if implemented at all. That's why you have the railway system that is still limping, which has caused high volumes of trucks on the road that have caused destruction of the roads, accidents and so forth and so on. So those are, are things that form part of um, those seven objectives of the ANC that should translate into um, KPAs and then from those KPAs, is then you derive your KPIs, which are your objectives, and then their baselines accordingly. Um, ANC spoke about uh, even the last one, the seventh one, in fact, about ensuring that Africa as a continent advances. I yeah. mean, um, we talk about the we talk about it's in fact, let me just quote it in there, but building a better Africa and a better world. Um, building a better Africa, Zimbabwe just went to elections. SADC, the AU, the EU and other observer bodies have said that these elections were not free, were not fair, which then impairs the credibility of these elections. We know that if Zimbabwe does not function properly, SADC does not function properly. You find then the SG of the ANC goes on Twitter and says, Viva Munangwangwa. Uh, which means that um, he agrees with what Munangwanga had done. He had, by extension, agrees with what ZANU PF has done. By extension, means whatever is happening in Zimbabwe currently agrees with. So, how are you building a better Africa by ignoring these reports? So, that again is something that will be looked into by voters next year since the issue of immigration is quite high. Um, you have also other things there as well as um, building state capacity. We see from our 257 municipalities, more especially those that are led by the ANC, are dysfunctional, not just because of the audit reports that would then audit the performance and financial reporting, 
but they are just dysfunctional. There's no service delivery taking place. Even those that do get clean audits, um, they are still not supplying the adequate service delivery that is required. Um, it, we are still living in a contract state that is a tender state. That is a um, state institutions that do not have internal capacity to carry out their mandates. Bongani. Even if it means um, changing a light bulb, changing a, a door handle. Bongani, I'm just I'm going be, to have um, to interrupt. To I'm going to have to interrupt that um, po um, point there. Um, thank you for those sentiments. Also, because some are of the view that we're living in an age of policy stagnation and so we're looking for new ideas and interventions perhaps as we age closer to 2024 and beyond to address the inequalities. Bongani Mahlangu, political analyst, thank you for those sentiments.